Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry. And Motors and Blowers! Good morning. Welcome to another episode. As you saw previously, I just picked this up thanks to Andy the Brit's brother-in-law who saw it on his way over and uh, he told me where it was and I zipped on out there, picked it up. It's done. It's just what he said it was. Wheels off. It's a Honda push mower. He says the he talked to the owner and uh, the engine runs. The only problem with this thing is that it doesn't have a bagger. And also, it doesn't go backwards. It goes forwards just fine, but you can't go backwards. You guys who work on these things know exactly what the problem is. Over the years, the hub rusts. And so the action that it has, the clicking mechanism inside the hub allows it to go forward, but it's supposed to free wheel backwards on the hub and the axle. So what happens is over the years, the rust seizes that hub and it prevents it from going backwards. So basically what we just gotta do is take the rear wheels off Get a wired bristle brush and clean that area on the inside. <laughs> and then wire bristle brush the axle to get the rust out, lube it, and it should go backwards if you wanted to pull it backwards. But first, we're going to see if the owner says it runs, if it really runs. So what we're going to do right now is there's no gas in here at all. So we're just going to put gas in it, okay? Uh, the prudent thing to do is to spray some jism into the carburetor first, right? And then give it a couple of pulls to see if it turns over, right? Uh, but I'm not going to do that because, as you guys know, Hondas have the stock fuel shutoff. So even if we put gas in here and we wanted to test the jism, whatever, we can just turn it off and just work on it if we want. So to save a step, we may not need to shoot jism in it. Maybe we put gas in it and it'll start fire right up. Fire it up, fire it up, fire it up. Put a little bit of gas in here. Just enough for testing. Turn the fuel shut off, off. So that fuel should be trickle, 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 trickling into the carburetor. Check the Earl really quick just to see if there's any in there. And there's plenty of Earl. What's up, bro? Let's give it a pull and see what happens. Sounds good when you pull it though. You know, good action. to adjust this it allows you to pull this down so before this thing was like there right so that you your thumbs would have to go all the way like that to get it to engage so it'll i mean i guess guys with gorilla hands or something could would need that 
but I got little small tiny hands. You know what they say about guys with tiny hands, right? Small gloves. Anyway, this is easier for me. It lets you adjust where the positioning is. So over here would be how it would it would engage. Maybe if I did a little higher, like right there. Yeah, that feels much more comfortable. So we have a working lawnmower right off the street. Fires right up, self propulsion works, wheel treads are in good condition, except for maybe the real ones could be changed, but it would still work just fine. As you guys know, the Honda ones, they make very durable wheels and uh, they're like rubber tread instead of plastic. You know what I mean? Uh, I wish I had a bagger for it, but you know what? Beggars can't be choosers. So all we have to do now is remove the two rear wheels and check out why it doesn't go backwards. So here we have a 10 millimeter socket on the ratchet. Now that's tightening it. Do that to untighten it. Now this is variable speed. So you touch it a little, it'll go slow. Super slow click like that. So more pressure. Very cool. bolt the wheel should just pop right out as you can see these are metal gears on the hondas so they don't rub out as easily as maybe like a toro which is plastic this might be more difficult because this is not exactly what i expected i expected it to be super rusty over here which prevented it from going backwards but it's actually this i don't know it does go backwards So it's not the wheel itself or the hub, it's actually the gearbox, which doesn't allow it to go backwards. I mean, very difficultly, you could actually turn it, but it's very difficult to do. I suspect I might have to take the gearbox, open up the gearbox and check out what what's restricting it from going backwards easily. Maybe a little bit of lubrication because look, it does go backwards, you just have to manhandle it, you know? And just from pulling the handle of the weight of the machine is not gonna grip it enough to allow it to go backwards smoothly. So it's actually not the wheel, but it's the gearbox. I might have to turn that off. I might have to uh, take the gearbox cover off and check it out. Of course, I put gas in there already, so I can't flip it upside down. Who told me to put gas in it first? Oh, that's right, me. So this is the quadra blade thing, has two blades, four edges. And uh, I'm gonna first try some um, penetrating oil right along here. Let it go inside and soak the area that's supposed to turn a lot. I might have to flip this the other direction, get it to soak in there. So I'm gonna do that. And we'll see if it kind of helps it out a little. Look, it's getting better already as I move it around, you know what I mean? So I'm just gonna oil this area, let it drip down. But the penetrating oil does seep into areas that you normally can't see, that's what penetrating oil is. It seeps. It's trickling down there, we'll let it sit for a little bit. I'll flip it on the other side, do the same thing for that, and here. Let gravity do the work. You know what, let's just Let's just remove this uh, plate here and see what happens. Hi.
here, oh my, there goes all the Earl. <laughs> I'm gonna get the oil in there now. Good oil too, but it's all Gonski now. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to flip it upside down and put some oil in there. Flip it upside down, I don't wanna. To flip it upside down, I don't want all the gas to leak out. So I'm gonna try putting a plastic bag over here. We'll test it and see if it drips out. I think it still will. Find some gear oil. I'll put penetrating oil here. here.
I don't think this is causing it, but it doesn't hurt to clean it up. So as you saw on time lapse, it was a little towed in on that one. Took the wheel off, bent it so that's now straight. After cleaning up the gears and oiling the joints and the areas and replacing the oil in the gearbox, check it out, fellas. Forward clicking. And now just from pulling it, it goes backwards. It's not as smooth as I would like it to be but it does pull backwards slowly. I think if you just move it around a little bit more, let the hole penetrate, it'll be okay. How about it? All it needed was a little Earl. Let's release the hounds. Trickle, trickle, trickle. Super clean it. Super clean. Yes, I use a lot of super clean because I don't like to have to work hard. You use super clean, you don't even have to brush it or agitate it. You just spray it on and then hose it off. You guys have seen in my other videos, I do this with every lawnmower that I want to list. I do spray a lot of it on here, especially the block itself with coated engine oil all over. lately once I fix one or pick one somebody texts me and says hey they want to buy it so sales have been pretty good I've been selling some decent mowers this year not as much as I did three years ago but I'm selling them for much more money now I used to sell mowers for like 50 bucks to 80 bucks to 100 bucks. Now I'm selling for like 250, 300. So while I'm selling less, I usually double or triple the price that I used to. Let's see if we can sell this for 275.
you guys saw from time lapse. Whole family came, didn't speak a lick of English, right? The minute he looked at it, he took it down. He goes, oh, so old looking. I'm like, Are you crazy? You're buying a Bentley or a lawnmower, you know what I mean? So, you know, I knew right away. I didn't even want to try to talk him into it or something because he didn't speak any English, you know what I mean? So uh, he said the picture looks so much newer than this. I'm like, you're a nut. And you're going to get nuts like that. Tire kickers, people that will waste your time. So I was like, okay, help me up with it. Bye. Just like that. You know what I mean? I'm not even going to waste any more time with it. They've wasted enough of my time. But like I said, you're going to get this. If you sell the amount of lawnmowers that I do every year, you're going to get a small percentage that are just either flaky. Well, a large percentage of flakes, you know what I mean? But uh, tire kickers and, you know, people just don't know what they want, whatever, or don't understand. It's part of the trade, fellas. Buy and sell. You think everybody at a used car dealer sells every car to somebody that comes? No. You can't possibly have a 100% success rate to sell something to everybody that you see. You're going to have a small percentage that are flakes and don't know what they want. It's all part of the game. No big deal. Ten minutes out of my day. There we go. This one required a little bit more manhandling agitation. It was really dirty. A lot of oil. Uh, and now it looks fantastic thanks to some super clean. We got this little baby here to move backwards now. It's a little stiff, but it'll it'll loosen up after a while. Before it was seized, you know what I mean? Had a lot of gunk in between the gears and the wheel. A little bit of penetrating oil. We got this thing started up. Runs great. Of course, we did just wash it, so let's just give it another test. Easy start. this for 275 I'll take as low as 175 aim high so uh, I'm gonna go narfo the Garthok leave it in the comments if you guys know what that line is from you gotta be pretty old to know that line narfo the Garthok anyway hope you guys enjoyed the video we'll see you guys next time on mowers and blowers you will not for the guy talk! See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers!